Alright, just a quick preface, I will be working with a project I set up for a first person controller movement. Uh, if you want to, you can follow the tutorial right up here, somewhere here, or the link in the description. It really goes deep into how to set up a first person controller from scratch, so you really understand how it works in Unreal Engine. But you of course don't have to do that, if you have your projects already set up, just let's get going with it. So we will need two things for it, some input actions, so when some input happens, your keyboard, your gamepad, anything like that, and then some context under which it should happen. So let's start by creating a context, we are gonna make just one, no need to overcomplicate it. So let's make here a new folder for that, right click, put here a folder, call it input. In the context we can add by right clicking here, finding input and an input mapping context. Prefix it as im underscore and let's call it main, no need to complicate it, we'll have just one. If we open that we see quite nothing and if we try to add a mapping here we'll find out that we don't really have any. And we can actually create it right from here, but I would rather do it elsewhere, so it's easier for us to create a proper hierarchy. It's really good to keep the project organized. Right click here, make a new folder, and this is gonna be for our input actions. In here we can right click again, back into input, and we're gonna create ourselves some input action. Uh, let's keep a prefix, EA, and let's make it for movement. Alright, we can open that. And uh, right in here we're gonna change just one thing and that's gonna be our axis 2D. Uh, what we gotta realize is that for our movement we actually have two axes. We have our movement forward and our movement right. Uh, which sounds like actually four axes but it's actually two because we have our values in positives and negatives. So that means moving forward is our plus one and moving backwards is our minus one and then moving right is again one here and minus one in the opposite direction. So we're gonna leverage it to set up our movement here. Let's go back in our input, in our input mapping and if we try to add a mapping now we are gonna find out we have here EA movement. So let's do that. Now we click on it, we have here a few options to add. I'm just gonna set it up with WASD in the exact same way you can set it up with a gamepad joystick or if you are six year old with uh, a arrows on the keyboard. But yeah, would not recommend. So let's start by adding here all these inputs. We can add here all four of them, simply binding it by clicking here, W, S, A and D. We need to tell this input action which of the values should be representing which X and which value, whether it should be positive or negative. So first of all, we're gonna take our W and S and add here a swizzle. Swizzle input axis value basically tell us for our 2D action to make sure whether we are uh, whether it's supposed to use X or Y, because we want on our A and D to be using X and our W S should be using Y or the other way around. I'm not entirely sure the important is that each of those sets is using only one of them. So we're gonna add here a input axis value for our W and S and we want to add here one more thing and that's for our S to be negated. So we're gonna add here another modifier and put here a negate. What it basically means is that the value that's in here would be only positive if we didn't negate it. So our W and our S would be both 1. Now if we negated it, it's gonna be minus 1. 1 and minus 1, which is gonna be perfect for our movement setup. And we're gonna do the same thing for A, because of course A needs to be negated as well. Otherwise we would have here 1 on the Y, 1 on the Y, and we want 1 on the Y and minus 1 on the Y axis. Let's negate this, save it, and let's set it up with our character. I have here a very simple first person character made in a previous tutorial, so let me just keep it in here. And as you can see we have here a setup where we are using a simple equation to get a direction in which our character should move. So we're gonna replace all of this and this with our new enhanced input which makes it much easier to work with, but a little bit diffi more difficult to understand, so that's why we started with this in previous tutorial. So first of all, we actually need to set up our enhanced input, so this actor knows it should know certain mapping context. We will need to get our begin play, to get access to our player character. Let's just cast here, I'm gonna cast to player character class, and we will need to use enhanced mapping context. That's basically a subsystem that exists within Unreal Engine that lets us handle the input. So we're gonna right click here, get player controller and from the controller we can get enhanced input. Enhanced input local player subsystem to keep it safe, no need to make uh, to cause any unnecessary crashes, we can check if it's valid. I'm gonna check its validity here and when this all is true and correct uh, we can add here a mapping context. So let's drag from here and add mapping context. There we go and we can keep it simple because there is just one mapping context connect it in here and we can drag this value down here. For now I'm gonna disconnect everything after my event kick 
now with this setup we can get our input action so luckily we were smart and used the correct prefix so we're gonna put in ea underscore and it's gonna get us everything we need and all of the future enhanced input by that using this shortcut will be easily accessible through this so let's include it in here and we can hear a bunch of settings i just expanded it and we get here our action value which is our 2d axis so first of all what i want to do is whenever this is happening i would like to print on the screen the value of this i just first want to make sure everything works as it should i'm not gonna really go through each of these events and explain what they do you can hover over it it's gonna tell you right away and i'm pretty sure that you are smart enough to do so and we're also smart enough to leave a like so please do so so we are gonna use just our triggered event which is basically gonna be happening as long as our event is happening which means as long as the button is pressed in a physical term just to make sure to understand so we're gonna print here a string string is gonna have a key and that will be movement just so we don't get the full wall of text on the screen and we're gonna connect our action value all right let's click on play nothing is happening and if i press my w i can see that my y is uh, one in my if i press s it's uh, it's minus one now it's one and on the other side so seems like it's doing exactly what we wanted minus one if i said w and d it's gonna be one and any combination in between them which means our system works perfectly so now let's actually set up without movement so first of all i'm gonna grab this value and break it into a vector 2d so now get our x and y so while it is triggered i would simply like to add a movement input so a little bit of a movement towards the direction i want and which direction you are probably asking is gonna be our forward and our right vector i explained the math behind it in the previous tutorial so if you are curious in that wanna dig deep i would definitely recommend looking there right now i'm just gonna get forward vector from my camera and the right vector now we just can't mix it up so hopefully it should be forward vector multiplied by a x vector Add it up with a right vector multiplied by a y vector. It should be pretty straightforward. Let's connect this and add to our word direction. Let's see now. Can click on play and it is correct. Is what I would love to say, but no, I messed it up again. So we are gonna have to switch around our forward and right vector. So let me just move them around. This is what always happens. Gonna do it like this, and now it should be correct. Now we can move forward, backwards, right and left and uh, it seems to work pretty nicely it's automatically adapting everything is pretty nice all right we can keep it here and uh, this is not particularly nice to have here as this whole set of events so i'm just gonna grab the whole thing and gonna uh, hide it into a pure function so let's just right click collapse it into a function and this is gonna be our movement direction and let's make check it as pure there we get our movement direction all right now movement setup instead of like eight nodes that we had here we got like one nice and simple one maybe two actually with our movement function and it's also quite a bit more optimized when it's set up like this uh now let's look at the next uh sinner here and that's our mouse x and y that is actually not that much to change so we're gonna basically do the exact same thing and converting it into an enhanced input so let's speed run this we can go into input input action we can just duplicate it pretty much because it's gonna do exact same thing it's 2d vector again we got x and rename it to our look open that no need to change anything let's close this thing we get in our input input main here new mapping the new mapping is gonna be a look and we probably don't even need to do anything except adding here a mouse x and y to the axis let's save it in here open our first personal character and again because we are pretty smart we're gonna put here prefixes ea look and the only thing we're gonna do is to connect it in here let's break it down so we're gonna break vector and on triggered it should add x and y we don't we shouldn't even need to reverse it now let's see if it's needed and with all that rushing i actually forgot we have to negate our axis so we're gonna grab our main go back in our mouse x and y click plus here and add here a negate and we want to make sure that we decide which values we should be negated so let's add here additional arrow and we're gonna negate only our y axis with that everything should work as we want it so we got our triggered our x is connected to your our pitch our y is connected to pitch and with that we can play the game and everything should be as it should be everything is as it should be i assume okay we can move around we can look around 
And the last thing they're missing is jumping. So let's set some input quick actions. Let's get the input action and now let's make a new one. No copying this time. Input action, EA and jumping. All right, and this time we're not gonna change anything. Uh, our setting is a digital boolean. That means either it's switched or it isn't switched. So in this case, it is indeed pressed. I can go back in our input, input mapping, the new one, and the new one should be jumping. What button you wanna use for it is purely up to you. I am traditional, gonna use the space bar, save it all. And let's go back in our first person movement character, whatever your character is in your case. And instead of having it hard coded like this, we are gonna right click here and put here a input action underscore jump. And we have a few ways how to go about it. Uh, we can just uh, call it on start it. So let's maybe take this opportunity as look at a few different use cases how we could go with this. We have here a start it. That's probably what you are most likely to use when you press spacebar. It's gonna jump exactly as you wish. There may be an option to uh, adjust the force of a jump after you release the button. So what you can for example do is to once you complete your jump, we are gonna print here a string. And we are gonna print how much time have been the button pressed. Let's keep it in here, right? Let's jump and let it go. And we can see it's about 0.7, 0 0.8 seconds. So if you wanna play with it, you can, for example, let it to jump. So when it starts, it's gonna jump. And when we know the elapsed time was less than 0.5 seconds and on completed put here a simple branch and we can put here some debugs to make sure it does what we want print see the string this one is our double jump make sure to text b on green put this down and this is gonna be too late make it red red make it bleed if i keep pressing it and let go it's too late if i do it right away we are gonna end up in double jump and you can of course make this delay shorter. So right now I set it up that it has to happen between 0.5 seconds. If you want to have it just 0.2 seconds, it can make a little bit more sense. We can leave here a play and if we let go fast enough, it's gonna jump. Not particularly crafty mechanic, I suppose, but uh, it can do the job. It's good for demonstrating how you can work with enhanced input and all these value you have access to. All right, that's about it. I hope the tutorial was helpful for you and see you next time. Subscribe, like all these if you want to see more of the more of the tutorials and that's going to be about it. So fancy out.